<laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody else. <laughs> so, it's been a while. It has. Hello, everybody. Did you have a bunch of... I was of thinking... Yeah, yeah, I did. I was just thinking, like, uh, we've got loads and loads to catch up on, probably. I can't even remember the last time we did this, but then it occurred to me today, actually, it was earlier this year. It was just that I was in England when we last caught up on everything and did the Q&As. Yes. So a very long time. Hmm. So, I, well, I'm going to be in Japan with you guys um, around about the 10th of November. Yes. Yeah. So we could do we could do a chat from here, which would be fun, I think. Yeah. 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 And um, a week Monday, I'm flying out to the States to start the, on the tour with Yes. So do you want to start with that? I thought. Yeah. I thought I might mention or get you to mention a couple of things that have been going on since we last talked. But should we start with the tour? Because it's probably the headline, isn't it? It kind of is, but I have um, I have a bit of an issue with that. I mean, I, I, we'll do this again tomorrow and I'll have the dates. But my problem with the dates is that um, I've got two sets, one from management and one from their website, and they don't quite match. <laughs> I suspect okay. the management set is older. So the one from their website is up to date. Um, a question I get asked a lot is, am I going to be at every single one? And that's my hope that I will be at every single one. I had agreed last year with Brian Chambers from the Chambers Project to be at the TRPS, the TRIPS um, Festival at Golden Gate Park, and that's on the 21st of October. And it's a day off, yes. <clears throat> so I somehow have to go fly from their last concert, go to the trip show, and then fly back for the next concert. And Brian is very confident that we can do that. So <laughs> where would that involve? I mean, I know you're not confident on the dates, but can you tell us where you'll be going? Um, well, the, the or should we direct people to the Yes website? Yeah, <laughs> well, let's <laughs> go over this tomorrow when I've got them in front of me. <laughs> okay. But Juliet in Illinois, I think, is the place that I've got to get to by flying in the morning of that day. So that's the tricky one. The one before is no problem because I leave the day after in the morning after the concert. Okay, so the, the goal is to hit every date with yes, plus the Trips Festival in Golden Gate Park, San Francisco. Exactly right. That is the So plan. if people want to see you, then they can go to the yes website and see what dates are going on. And, and we'll be updating as you go as well, won't we, if there are changes in plan. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you going to be doing? Well, there's um, Michael and his gang are touring an exhibition of my work with Yes. So I will be there signing stuff, I guess. And then as far as I know, the plan is that at the beginning of each concert, I'll do a short talk. Do you know what you're going to be talking about? I never do. <laughs> I always have my fingers crossed that whatever I say makes sense. <laughs> well, you were saying the other day, because um, we haven't mentioned much about it, that you went to Crop Ready Festival in England and you did yes. a talk there. Yes. And you were saying that you couldn't hear any feedback and it was quite difficult well, it was very weird because everyone sat in a big, wide arc away from the stage. 
you know, it was like you had some kind of massive BO or something. There was just this oh. huge semicircle of people or, <laughs> or semicircle of space where no one sat. And I realized, you know, that they were being very intelligent. It was the area where you couldn't see the screens that were either side. So they sat where they could see the pictures. They didn't That's need interesting. To see they needed to see the image. <laughs> <laughs> so that was what it was about. But it did mean it was very odd because if anyone said anything, or I, there's no way I could have heard it because they were all quite a distance back. Did you do any Q or A, Q and A's or anything while um, you were crop ready? Not really, no. I did afterwards. There was a kind of a tent they did where they we were supposed to go and sign stuff and answer questions, I guess. So I did afterwards, but not from the stage. Do you want to mention what crop, crop ready is for anyone who doesn't know or didn't make it? Yes. Um, Tomorrow I'll show the posters and then you can see what it's all about. It's um, it's called, it's full title is Fairport Crop Ready Convention. Because Fairport Convention have been doing it for decades. And it's a little, Crop Ready, weirdly, it's a little village in Oxfordshire. Very pretty village in Oxfordshire. And it's got road access and canal boat access <laughs> <laughs> that's really nice it's like people talk about those parties where they have you know places you can land a jet they're so fancy and i like the idea of parties you can go to that are so folky you can go <laughs> <laughs> somewhere you can land your <laughs> houseboat <laughs> yes you need to be on the way for about three weeks beforehand though to get there yeah <laughs> it was lovely the people were lovely it was just an amazing thing it was wonderful yeah it's doesn't it advertise itself as like the night the the friendliest festival or something does it well i think so that makes sense that does make sense yeah i was disappointed i couldn't go well it sounded fun next year yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when we next talk, which will be tomorrow or the next day, we're going to get the dates and everything for this yes tour nailed and post them. Um go over a little bit more about what we're going to be doing and talk about other things that have been in the pipeline for a long time, like the immersive experience that was supposed to happen last year, last November. And fortunately, I think fortunately, got cancelled because it was just an impossible schedule. So we're doing it slightly differently now, more time, more money, and a great deal more and better organization. Well, yeah, that would be great. I definitely want to talk about what's coming up. I want to catch up about what's been going on up till now as well. Um, but I've got a couple of questions about you and yes, and things like that as well. Okay. Should we do those? You can. And then we can get into things properly. Right. Okay. Oh, I can tell you the questions that I've got and then you can think about them for the next chat. Yeah, do you that want to tell better. me or do you want to email me? I'll tell you. I'll do both. Okay. Um, so a couple of questions that I had were um, how do you enjoy the touring experience? Mm. <laughs> Mostly I do, actually. Weirdly. I mean, it's 50 years since I first toured with Yes. So it's 50 years since I went to Japan first with Yes. 1973, we went to Japan. Um, 
So it's been a long time. I haven't done a lot of it in between those first times and later times, but it's it's quite enjoyable. I love now because we seem to go everywhere by car or <laughs> bus or whatever. Um, with very few flights, I like the fact that I get to see America, and so you know, gradually working yourself, working our way down the East Coast and then across and then up <clears throat> the West Coast. It's yeah, I love it. I love it. Do you do the Pacific Coast Highway? You're going to be doing that this time. I don't know. I don't know. We didn't last time. <clears throat> Last time I was with them, we didn't do that. But, yeah. I miss that. I love that. Yeah. Um, so you just said, yeah, it's been over 50 years. Is that right that you've been working with Yes? Oh, yes. Well over. Yeah. So this might be a difficult question to answer, but I have it. What was um, what was the thinking behind the Yes logo? Where did that come from? All that time, you know, ago, there weren't, <clears throat> you know, all the sort of computer fonts and things to Google and Google image and stuff. What were you looking at? What were you thinking of for Yes when you came up with their logo? Can you remember? The wiggly one. Yeah, I remember. Um... I started off, of course, with capital letters. And it, if you think of them in terms of geometry, you start with a Y that's essentially a triangle. You have an E that's essentially a box. And you have an S that's essentially the most curvy shape in the alphabet. And as capitals, <clears throat> I thought that would work, but... I thought it might work much better in lowercase when they could all be fluid. So that was about as much thinking as I gave it. And my preferred way of working is to just zone out and, you know, let the pencil do the walking or the pencil do the thinking and keep out of it, mind my own business and let it get on with it. <laughs> kind of that's how it worked. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you do it over and over, or was it sort of once and then you worked on that one? Or... I did it in a sketchbook, a very thin um, paper, which I work on a lot, which is called, um, uh, what is it called now? Damn it. Oh, I know what you mean. It's detail. Bristol? No, detail. Yeah, it's detail paper, which is slightly more opaque than tracing paper um, and it's much more gentle to work on with a pencil so I would do a, a doodle and instead of working on that doodle when it started getting busy with a, enough pencil lines to know what I wanted it to convey I would then slide it under the next page and effectively trace off it and this, keep that process going and my recollection is I did six tracings. And they're all now in the Victoria and Albert Museum. <laughs> oh, with, no. Do you get them back? With, no, no. They were donated. <laughs> along with the finished... <laughs> <laughs> along with the finished coloured logo, the finished coloured painting. Donated, eh? <laughs> <It's> a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got scans of them, though? Have you got yes, something yes, people yes, can yes. see? They're in views, in the book Views. Uh, okay. Have you ever come across okay, that, that book? <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking it's obvious that I haven't read it enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. yeah. Of course I've read it. Moving on. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> it's great. Of, of course, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Well, no, I mean, so I was, I said the curvy one, I said that logo because 
the other Yes logo you did, the chop one, that was based on Chinese stamp. Is that right? Or oh, Japanese ones, yes. Yeah. The ones that the one that is behind you right now, actually, I just realized. That one. Yes, exactly. Um and and what the essence of that is that a uh, the the word yes in that is done as as originally the first basic drawing was done with brush strokes as in Japanese or Chinese calligraphy. And it was done at a time when um <laughs> Brian Lane and a couple of members of the band rang me up and said, there's a big legal dispute about who can use the logo. So could you do another one? And I said, yes. And I did that one. And then just as it was about to use, be used, Brian rang me up and he said, it's okay, we don't need it. We've sorted the dispute. And I thought, bugger, I love this new one. You've got to use it at least once. Yeah. So we used it on the box set of um, Yes Years with the yellow painting. Why did you think of the chop, the stamp? What made you, you just like how it looks or did the letters suit that kind of how something's carved out? I just found myself doing it. You know, it's, as a process, it works very well for me. Literally get the pencil moving and back off and see what happens. That has always worked. That's my preferred way of working. But there may have been things that triggered it and start it. I often do that, but um, it is it is a process where conscious thought is is kind of your enemy. Yeah, yeah. Although it looks very deliberate and like a one-stroke thing, as it is. Yes, of course. That's the plan. You know, I what I like to do is calligraphy. That's like a careful, detailed drawing, and I like to do drawings like they're loose and and like calligraphy. Um, the person who was the master of that was Rick Griffin. His paintings look like fabulous calligraphy, and his calligraphy is done carefully like paintings. So it's... <laughs> I was wondering, have you ever seen anybody make one of those stamps? I have. Um, I've had a couple of them made of that logo. And oh, were, fantastic, yeah. I've got them somewhere. They're made in a kind of stone. Um, I imagine once they would have been made in bone or ivory. Um, and I got one made in um, on Grant Street in San Francisco, in Chinatown. But I did have mm. some very nice people from Japan make me one of my logo and the yes logo and they were they were done properly and that that was the um the owner of um strange days magazine mm -hmm. i haven't seen these i haven't seen any of these yeah. oh my god there's the most gorgeous rainbow outside i want to get this on camera Sorry, everyone, if you're listening and not watching. Can you see? Oh, my God, yes. Oh, and you're in your new studio in Mitsuyasu's shop. Yeah, can you actually see the rainbow? Yes, yes, no. I just see a wonderful no. sort of evening sky. <laughs> oh, that's really frustrating because it's there's too, the most amazing. It's too bright to see the rainbow. Oh, no, that's so frustrating. Sorry, that makes for a really boring video. Um, I've got to get that captured. Sorry, Mitsias, come on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry.
sorry, sorry. Sora, mite, niji. Sorry, this is terrible. Sorry, sorry. Let's crack on back to away. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we I did this class in like ink painting, sumier, and uh, one of the things that they did, because no one had a stamp themselves, is they cut a little square out of a bit of paper and they put that on top of your art and they got you to stick your finger in some red ink and then put your finger over the square so you've got a little square imprint of your fingerprint in the corner oh. of the picture, as instead of, you know, a name stamp. Hang on a second. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, for all of these interruptions. Um, yeah. I wish I got that rainbow on video. I'll put a picture of it up somewhere. I share everyone. I share everyone with character while we're waiting. You um, and Oshan have a very similar shirt on. <laughs> Little cotton Hawaiian blue shirt. Are you there? Okay. Yeah. They come in this beautiful box. And oh, no. yeah, that's one. And that's an even fancier one. So there's its box. And that is going to be really not very satisfying as a listening podcast thing, but <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this will be on the YouTube as well. I'm showing you the hand carved stamps. And that's the third one. I don't know what it says. Mm -hmm. oh, no. I'm showing you it upside down. So that's it. Just about can see that. Yeah. And that's what it does. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I love them, don't you? Yes, I do. I suppose by the time you did that, you knew or suspected it was going to be used a lot. But did you imagine when you did the first one, how kind of well known and well used it was going to become? No. And as I said, when, when I was told before it ever got used that there was no need for it anymore. I thought, no. <laughs> no, but the first one, the curvy one. Oh, yes, yes. No, I, had, I didn't even know that Yes would use it because they didn't ask me to do it. They asked me to do the cover of Fragile, and this was done after that. And they hadn't asked me to do the cover for their next album. So it was a kind of a, what can I say? It was a game I played with myself. It was not. It was not a commission, and it was definitely stood a fair chance of never being used. So I was very grateful when they liked it. Oh, that's really interesting. So you just did it for your own, just to see. Yeah, yeah. Was that the I, first logo you'd done? It was the first one I'd done in a way that I wanted to do it. I, I had done a few when I was at college and, in, and the one I did for the gun, which I'd have to say were in the confines of, the, of graphic design as taught, you know, sans serif fonts and all that kind of stuff. I hated that. And it was only when I felt I could do whatever I liked. So it was the first one I did at the point when I thought I can, I'm free to do what I want. And it's it's interesting because you say it's everywhere. I've I've had unbelievable numbers of people show me their tattoos of the Yes logo, including yes. Yeah. endlessly being told all my school books were covered in it. I, I I've said this before, but I do remember I was doing a signing in San Francisco, and 
a young man said to me, do the yes logo, please. So I did the square chop one. And he said, no, 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 no. I want the curvy one. And I said, oh, I can't do that. And he said, why? Have you signed an agreement not to do it? Or, I said, no, no, no. I just can't remember how it goes. He, That's ridiculous. He said, I've done it thousands of times all over my school books. And I said, well, you did it thousands of times. I only ever did it once. <laughs> so it was much harder to remember. <laughs> Don't know why that reminded me of like, oh God, someone was commissioning Giotto to paint something and they wanted him to prove how good he was. And someone handed him some paper, like the messenger of whoever it was, I don't know, the Pope. And Giotto just drew a perfect circle single handedly once and he got the job. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you just do that one time and it's done and it's perfect. Well, that's a kind of very Zen thing, isn't it? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, the circle is, isn't it? What's it? It's, God, it's got a name, I can't remember. And they have two meanings. If it's closed or if it's open, it means something else. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying you, you weren't sure at the point where you did Fragile that they, you were going to do more. When was it kind of settled or decided or when did it feel like your artwork for yes was going to be an ongoing or permanent long-term thing there was always the potential for it not because I, I thought my work was particularly appropriate or good but because it started with a narrative and I was curious to see where that narrative went and that's how I talked to the band about it but when they first talked to me about the cover. I showed them some beautiful turn-of-the-century illustrated books and talked about a story and then about this child dreaming of the, their little world breaking up and building a space arc. So that was kind of how I talked about it rather than just showing pictures. And the story was followed up not directly on the next album, which was close to the edge, but which was eventually to be part of the story. But the next sequence from Fragile was painted during the four paintings done for the live album, Yes Songs. Yeah, so when I was doing Close to the Edge, and they were talking to me about it, and I showed them the logo. They didn't want the painting on the cover. They wanted the cover to be just the logo. So that was very nice. That was very flattering. Um, and it did mean that there was no printing on the painting on the inside. So I did enjoy that too. Right. So the reason they chose to have that as the cover was because they wanted the logo to stand out because they loved that. I hope, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the surprise when you open it up that the cover art is not on the cover. Yes, yes. It might have worked to have both because there was a lot of sky in that painting. So the, could have, the logo could have gone into that and it could have been a cover, but it worked very well how it ended up. Was that story something that you and the band talked about doing as something with the music or was that just your story that you wanted to make art from? It was oddly enough, it was my story and Martin's. We both worked on that story. Um, I thought it would go with the music. Still do, in fact. And we're still working on a version of the story now. So <clears throat> the immersive experience is based partly on that story. I say partly because that story has become a kind of creation myth within a bigger story. I have been pestered to take all the imagery and the story and make an illustrated book of it. So that might happen too. 
What about a movie? Well, that could happen too. <laughs> yeah, we've been trying on that for quite a few years. Could happen. It could happen. We're wandering off the subject. What's your next question? My next question, well, is very close to what you're talking about, actually. Um, you were talking about the story that you thought went with Jess's music. Um, and the next question is, is the art that you create for Yes now different to the art that you made for them in the beginning? Has it changed with the music or has it just, have they just both evolved in their own way? Um, it's interesting because to me, it's changing all the time. But once you look at them all together, they look like me, all those paintings. But to me, when I'm doing them, each one is very different to the previous one. You know, going from something as colorful as fish swimming across a desert, as tales from topographic ocean, to a very medieval looking knights in armor type scene on Relaya. Um, and Drama, again, was another direction entirely. But then later ones, you know, these are very careful drawings. The later ones are, are paintings, much looser. Um, I love doing the quest, and I love doing Mirror to the Sky. And again, while I was doing them, it felt very different to anything I'd done before. But when you see them all together, they look like there's a family relationship. I was watching that Andy Warhol documentary on Netflix the other day, and he was saying, we all just paint the same painting over and over again. And I thought, God, I wish I hadn't heard someone say that. That's going to be stuck in my head now. I'm going to be so conscious of that. <laughs> Mm. And I'm sure it's, you know, it's not true anyway. Not not exactly. Um I was wondering when you were saying that you feel like your more recent ones are looser. Do you think that you kind of after working for, you know, many years doing what you do do you get i'm trying to find <laughs> a polite way of that's polite um get a shorthand for things do you think does it become more does it just come out more immediately is that um i can do it and trust that it's right in a way even 10, in, 10 years ago, I'd have wanted to fret a bit more about it and work into it. So I can let go quicker now. I try not to do that, thinking about it and working into it. Even when I'm working in a very intricate way, I still like to keep it out of my head, if you like, keep it loose and automatic. Um, mm. But I can make a very loose gestural painting that gives the impression of being very tight and very disciplined. That's because it's very disciplined, but not in the least tight, if that makes sense. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Disciplined by practice rather than in the moment. Rather than struggling with it. Yes, disciplined by practice. Do you think that the evolution of that, I mean, would you say that that could be comparable to what happens with the music or is that very different, do you think? I, not... I have thought about that a lot and I thought about it in the context of a guitarist who worked with Alan, Alan White on his band, they called the White Sox. And 
this guy could play Jimi Hendrix music amazingly. And the difference between him and Jimi Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix was the master, but he died very young. And who knows what he would have gone on to do. Um, somebody who's learned from Jimi Hendrix, but has had 20, 30 or 40 years to perfect and loosen up in the process. You know, unless you're lazy, and I most musicians who are good aren't really lazy, they get better. And they get better at playing their old stuff as well as playing new stuff, I think. I think that's that's definitely true. So I would say that's true of yes too. That they are better now than they were fifty years ago. Even though it's Can not. Can you the same. hear it? Sorry. Can you hear it when you see them play when you're on tour with them? I mean. Is it too distant to compare, or can you kind of hear how they've first time? You know, I, I imagine they can hear it. They can hear it with far greater perception than me. But the first time I thought, "Wow, this is different," was when they were playing um, a, one of the tracks from Tales from Topographic Oceans, which, when it was when they first toured it, was quite tight. It wasn't loose at all. It was accurate, but there was a lot of tension in the playing. And then many years, several decades later, when they played a track, I thought there's a kind of transcendental inevitability about it. It was loose and comfortable and spot on. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, they never played like that in the year that they made the album but they play like that now. So yes, I have heard it and I have heard it quite clearly, but I don't have the perception of many of their fans, let alone the band themselves. Mm. It is both something I've heard in that example I gave and an article of faith too, you know. Um, there might come a time when they are less able to play, but so far, that hasn't happened. I mean, I suppose, yeah, sort of on that same subject. Another question I've got is that while you're watching them um, play on tour, do you get ideas for artwork to do for them for their next cover or stages or? You know, does that come up while you're watching them? Or do you just enjoy watching them when you see them while you're touring together? Um, ideas come when I'm not paying attention. So if I'm paying attention to them, yes, ideas do come. That's the key to a flow of ideas. You need to be in that daydreaming state of mind when you're not paying attention. Um, so I listen without paying attention, if that makes sense. Sometimes I do pay attention. I remember I really enjoyed it. Last time I was with them when they were playing Gates of Delirium because I had not heard them play that for the longest time. And it was amazing. Yeah, that's one of my favorite Yes tracks. And they, for my money, play far too rarely. <laughs> Can you not make requests? <laughs> I imagine lots of in people In a stadium, <laughs> in an arena. Do they not take requests? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> hmm. So has it, I mean, lots of people have asked this in lots of different ways, but I suppose I'm going to ask it in a slightly different way as well um, from that. Has it happened that you've been listening to them play something like Gates of Delirium? Um, or any of the music they play on the tours, and you've had an image come into your head that, you know, is something you want to do? 
yes but it doesn't it's not done to order like that what will happen is i might be listening to case of delirium and i have an idea how i can rearrange the masses of, of a architectural design or figure out a new way to do a pathway you know or even yeah a gardening idea the ideas are frequent but not made to order if it's something i've been i've been that's been on my mind quite a lot yeah that can happen i i can come up with an idea that is pertinent but it's you don't make it pertinent by listening to the music i don't come up with an idea for gates of delirium by watching it unless it was on my mind no but not necessarily for that specifically but just for an art piece you might not even use for them do images come into your head or you're listening to them that then you've later on used because you just wanted to make it after listening to the music yes i want i Go wouldn't it's more detail than that because for me um you know i'm not equipped to capture ideas if i'm watching them you know it's like driving a car i might have ideas when i'm driving a car but i can't make notes while i'm driving a car oh you don't have a way of turning it into words that you can remind yourself of later i blue sky red sea <clears throat> no fox jumping no no i trust that I'll, if it's important i'll remember it and i usually do or if i don't it goes so completely from my mind i have no regrets <laughs> that's the trick <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> This, what's happening here is really great because er everything that you're saying leads on to every next question that I have. I think maybe that's my skill as an interviewer. <laughs> right. <laughs> but this is going so well. Having said that, I've just forgotten the next question. <laughs> that's my no, job. No, it's come back. That's it's my job. <laughs> okay, I'll respond by forgetting the answer. No, no, you're going to give me the answer because this is my question oh, okay. um, that uh, it just occurred to me today that I didn't know that I could think of an example of this. But have you ever made a piece of artwork that wasn't specifically for someone or for a commission that was just because you really wanted to do it and maybe used it later for something else? Oh, I would say most of my paintings work that way. You just want to do the thing whatever it is mm. and then it may or may not get used mm. because my experience should I say this <laughs> is often when I see you painting 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 will be at about midnight when I'm about to go to bed and you've just started a canvas and I'll be like oh is that due soon and you'll be like yeah tomorrow <laughs> 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 see and i'll see a painting in the morning <laughs> like yeah, the cobblers yeah, mice I, or whatever that story is yeah that wouldn't happen now now what would happen is i would do most of the painting in the morning i much prefer painting in the morning and because mornings tend to get interrupted, I, a perfect morning for me is I might paint for an hour or two and then get start to get some interruptions and then, you know, get back to it later in the day. But um, it means I paint a lot at the weekends when I don't get interruptions in the morning. That's a really good point, isn't it? I had a day the other day where it was the evening and I hadn't had anything come through on my email and it had been really quiet and nice and I was just getting on with stuff and it occurred to me it was Sunday. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, that's the way to do it, isn't it? Early mornings and Sundays, not many people were 
lean over. I love that painting behind you. Thank you. Not done. Hey, the bit I can see looks like you've nailed it. Oh, thank you. Well, this is going to be, yeah, um, a part of the Fenian cycle for the Finn McCool story. But the bit about Oshan, his son, and how he gets discovered. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. We'll see, I hope so. The problem is when you do a painting in layers, the pressure builds <laughs> to not mess it up. Ah, well, you can always repair it, can't you? I'd love you to paint some clouds for me. I've never managed to get them that good. <laughs> oh, thank you. They just make it, they just make the mood, don't they? I think that's why that's why I've got so into them. On that note, I did get a photo. Well, Mitzi has got a photograph of that rainbow outside. Can you see it now? Yes, faint and just. Just a little splodge of a rainbow. Well, it's much more dramatic if you were here. Right. Good to be here, I guess. Um, well, the other questions I have are more um show me the history page. and huh? Show me the page. Not to I don't want to read it, just show me. I want to see what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Does, why does that look I'm just covering up the bit here which is like what I need to do for the day <laughs> <laughs> does it look nice is that why you wanted to see it I, lo it I love like looking at people's sketchbooks and journals uh, do you know what now I'm looking at it it's very tight small writing pressed together and it occurred to me people are going to think I'm a psychopath <laughs> it's a, it's the writing of someone who rants when they talk. <laughs> ah well. <laughs> the other, there might be some nodding to that <laughs> that I don't want to know about. Okay. So the next time we talk, you're gonna have the dates and places. Yes, I am. Okay, great. Um, and I have got other questions, but the other thing that I was going to say to people is um, if you watch this and you, and if we get this out before the next one, want to comment some questions about the tour and things that are coming up. It'd be good to do this on the tour, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be fantastic. It'd be fantastic. Maybe you could get Kristen or Ben or one of the guys to I don't know who's going out there with you but to do this while you're there with you well no I was thinking of you um yeah but I mean you don't need me if you've got someone there to do it with and they know a hell of a lot more than me about what's going on <laughs> but we can if you like I'll try and get more done on the painting all right so less monotonous to look at it's got interesting reflections across the bottom can you see just by your left shoulder when cars go by and things it ripples across um, the bottom of the painting no i'm not i'm very very tiny oh why I'm don't you do it so we're equal size on the screen oh i'm on my phone i don't know how and it's not necessary. You're on your phone. I am on my phone because I've got to bring my computer. Yeah. And is your phone on its side? <clears throat> Landscape? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It is. It is. Right. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything else. What I would like to get you talking about too is um, the 
and we could do this next time but the square in the circle movie and the album cover album talk that you went to yeah and looking at those two things and what you thought of those and tetris yes absolutely because okay. we we did that very long interview with tetra uh, with hank and um uh alexi before we saw the movie and I keep trying to get someone to put that up. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can get that done. We're... Yeah, because we've got a clip up on Instagram, but we haven't got the full. I think it's about 40 minutes, and it's so interesting. Yes. I found and it. And not timely at all anymore. Right. Okay. Well, let's see if we can deal with those three things. Yeah. The the person who did the talk on the album cover books was a writer, well, he's a graphic designer too, called Christopher Wilson. And he did an amazing job. I I was awestruck about how much research and background he put into his talk and writing. He was telling me stuff about the album cover books that I didn't didn't know. Like what? Can, does anything come to mind? Should we talk about that next time? Yeah, we'll talk about well, it next time. Okay. okay. And you said there's pictures of you and Storm putting the album cover album together on the documentary Squaring the Circle about him and hypnosis. Well, there's a couple of stills, that's all. They flicker past. Yeah. It, there's, um, I'll send you one of those because I've got one. But they were done, I spent a, a few days up there, but it was, I couldn't work in their studios because it was too much going on, too chaotic, too easy for things to get damaged and trampled on. So, I mean, in the space we had in Brighton, we could lay it out on the floor and leave it for a few days. And when you say it, you mean all the album covers? that you were putting together for the album cover album. Yeah. Was it literally records or was it artwork or printouts or it did was they have printers in there? Empty things? album covers or complete albums and albums. It's about half and half. No artwork. Maybe one or two only transparencies. But if somebody gave us transparencies, we went out and searched for the actual album. Right. I mean, at that point, did you see other relationships between artists and bands that were like yours and Yes's? In a way. Were they long term? Yeah. yeah. Um, but sometimes it was groups. I mean, Vaughan Oliver had an incredibly strong identity with 4AD and 23 Envelope. You know, one was his company, one was the record company. And yeah. And of course, the San Francisco artists with bands like um, Grateful Dead, Iron Butterfly, Jefferson Airplane. For me, Rick Griffin's Eric Sumatra for Grateful Dead kind of defined an era as well as an album. He didn't go on and do lots for them, but when Kelly and Mouse did and other of the artists, they all looked of a family. Okay, for next time. Mm. Yeah, let's talk about that. I think that would be interesting because you're saying that at the time of those records coming out, but looking back, you're, you'll be the only one that's still working with one of those bands from that time, presumably. I'm st the only ones. They're the only band of that time that is still working in that way anyway. I mean, there are bands like Rolling Stones 
But the Rolling Stones never had a relationship with one artist or even photographer. Okay, I think it probably is a good time. Oh, no. I know what I Well, I'm sort of waking up. You've the got Kraken. But Missy S has a client coming, doesn't he? Oh, that's already started, so. <laughs> Can you yeah. not hear? No. That's good. These oh, earbuds. Yes, yeah. Yes. The yes, yes. hair dryer going, and we're talking, and the baby is sleeping through all of this. Okay. I picked a good one. <laughs> Perfect. All right, sweetheart. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, don't forget to save the video and download it. No, I it. won't. I won't. I'll send it to you. Okay, brilliant. All right, I'll see you then. I'll see you then. Love you, girl. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Me too. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.